budget to the House. Thank you, Member for Tweed. I know you play hard and you've done good. Uh, Member for Hawkesbury. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, created unprecedented challenges to our state. To the fortune of the good people of New South Wales, the management of our state's finances in the years following Labor's economic mismanagement has been in the stable hands of the coalition government. Our fiscal responsibility has meant we could respond to the challenges faced by supporting individuals and businesses and stimulating the economy by investing in key projects. Access to better schools, green space and parks will absolutely make a world of difference to people's wellbeing. It is this state's government that uh, has committed to making the road forward. As we recover and move towards prosperity, we are fortunate to have the financial capacity to fund our great visions for education. I'm pleased that a large number of Hawkesbury schools uh, will benefit from New South Wales Government's $240 million regional and metro renewals program. Windsor Public School, for example, will benefit from a sports court upgrade. Bly Park Public School and Windsor Park Public Schools will benefit from toilet upgrades. Glossodia Public School and Freeman's Reach Public School will benefit from a canteen upgrade. I'm delighted that Hobartville Public School will have an upgrade to their admin and staff room. Brewongal Environmental Education Centre will have an upgrade to their kitchen. Hillside Public School, which has a total of 39 students, will have an upgrade to their playground. And Glenorie Public School will have an upgrade to their amenities. Further to the regional and metro renewals program, 23 schools in Hawkesbury electorate will have old, if inefficient, lights replaced with smart LED lights, benefiting the eyes and minds of students and the power bills for schools. The LED lighting upgrade program will bring savings on electricity bills and also improve the sustainability of schools and take steps towards the New South Wales government's commitment to achieving net zero emissions by 2050. These important investments in our children's education will also boost local employment as we recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. The LED Lights program utilises the local trade scheme and supporting more than 1,200 jobs by using local tradies and uh, doing the installation work where possible. Investment in our education is an investment into the future. The New South Wales Government is investing $7.9 billion over the next four years, continuing its program to deliver 215 new and upgraded schools to support communities across New South Wales. This is the largest investment in public education infrastructure in the history of New South Wales. Our students and their hardworking teachers deserve nothing less than quality infrastructure. And I'm proud to be part of the New South Wales government that is delivering so many projects in education. To tertiary education, various TAFE New South Wales campuses will be fitted with state-of-the-art digitally enabled learning spaces designed to link local students with a statewide network of industry qualified New South Wales TAFE teachers. Uh, this will enable students to participate in classes no matter where their teacher is located. This investment forms part of the $20 million initiative to build 200 high tech modern learning spaces uh, that support uh, virtual learning across New South Wales campuses by May 2022. My community is delighted that TAFE New South Wales Richmond will receive funding to fit a specialist facility with technology and equipment to enable Richmond-based teachers to share their highly sought after industry experience with students no matter where they live. Another of my key priorities and that of our government is to secure a brighter future for the good people of Western Sydney. After selling its residual 49% stake in Westconnex for $11.1 billion, the New South Wales Government announced that it would put profits from the road project into new fund aimed at revitalising Western Sydney and South Western Sydney. True to their word, the State Government on the 21st of September 2021 announced the $5 billion West Invest Fund for building new and improved facilities and local infrastructure to help communities hit hard with COVID-19 
and help the people of Western Sydney rebuild their lives and businesses. The sort of funding that this goes towards and the vision of our great government uh, is of vital importance and will assist in the recovery from the pandemic. This funding injection will be a game changer for the people of Western Sydney and South Western Sydney and a catalyst for growth. The new West Invest Fund focuses on projects that make a real difference to quality of life, help create jobs in the process and change the face of Western Sydney for the better. It will help rejuvenate Western Sydney communities and increase employment. The government will put $2 billion from the fund towards high priority projects to be developed in consultation with local communities, while $3 billion will be for future projects in six areas. Firstly, parks, urban spaces and green space, enhancing community infrastructure such as local sporting grounds, modernising local schools, creating and enhancing arts and cultural facilities, revitalising high streets and clearing local traffic. I'm looking forward to further upgrades and rejuvenation of Hawkesbury and neighbouring regions in Western Sydney. I have a few projects that I've got in mind and I'll be advocating to the New South Wales Treasurer for this work to be adopted. The investment announced will improve parks, open space and inject further life into town centres from which opportunities will grow. Prime Minister Scott Morrison was among the dignitaries which visited Richmond recently as we unveiled the new preferred route for the new Richmond Bridge and Bypass. The total joint commitment in federal and state funding is half a billion dollars, that's $500 million, with the federal government allocating $400 million and the state government kicking in $100 million in that 80-20 partnership that we have for vital infrastructure. The new Richmond Bridge and Bypass will alleviate a long-term traffic bottleneck between Richmond and North Richmond, double traffic capacity across Hawkesbury River, reduce travel times and cater for future growth in this growing part of Western Sydney. The current Richmond Bridge takes more than 31,000 vehicles a day and funnels traffic through both town centres, which is why we are doubling bridge capacity and bypassing Richmond and North Richmond. It is estimated that the new Richmond Bridge and Bypass will save motorists up to 12 minutes travel time through this area. Mr Speaker, as you are well aware, the New South Wales Government also seeks to assist those who are negatively impacted from disasters beyond their control. The recipients of the assistance aren't simply getting a handout, but rather a helping hand to enable them to recover and continue to strong contribution that they make to our economy and society. This is why I'm pleased that the storm and flood affected producers from Hawkesbury's critical agricultural and horticulture may apply for recovery support through the $80 million storm and flood industry recovery program co-funded by the Australian and New South Wales governments. The storm and floods that devastated Hawkesbury earlier this year caused significant damage to local and in particular local turf farms and vegetable growers thus affecting the businesses that rely on these industries. The agricultural and horticultural industries are key to Hawkesbury's economy, which has already taken a huge hit from the impacts of the prolonged drought, bushfires and the COVID-19 pandemic. The funding in this program will provide the direct assistance many local producers need to recover, as well as build resilience and preparedness for future natural disasters. The Storm and Flood Industry Recovery Program is one part of the $790 million New South Wales Storm and Recovery Package, co-funded by the Australian and the New South Wales governments. Mr Speaker, I'm pleased that a project aimed at increasing awareness of issues facing the Hawkesbury Nepean River has received $10,000 in funding as part of the Sydney Waters 2021 Community Grants Program. The project, known as Water Knowledge for the Hawkesbury Nepean River Sydney, is run by the Western Sydney University campus, comprising of the Regional Centre of Expertise on Education for Sustainable Development, Greater Western Sydney. The grant will fund a series of community days, activities and tools to engage and empower a variety of river users, land care groups and volunteer groups. This includes a citizen science training day, online resources and a cultural walk and talk, developments of a um, HNR species of the river survey 
and a report card and a regional uh, HNR forum. I'm sure even those opposite would agree that this is a beneficial, important investment. Mr Speaker, another key focus of mine and that of my coalition colleagues is the safety of our constituents on roads. Motorists travelling through the March and Bosworth Street intersections at Richmond um, have now um, been able to experience a smoother, more reliable journey with improvements to the busy junction now complete. And I've got to say it took around about oh, 19 months for that project, much um, uh, noise and interruption to local residents there, but the end result I think um, everyone's rejoicing in, so it was worth that journey. The coalition government has always been committed to the strength of our police force and ensuring that they have the resources and staffing required as they put their lives and safety on the line to protect our own lives and safety. It is always uh, a proud moment of mine to welcome new officers to the community as part of New South Wales Police Force that has been strengthened by investment from the New South Wales Government, including the delivery of 1,500 additional officers over four years. Earlier this year, I welcomed probationary constables Joshua Alexandra, who had completed eight months of foundational training at the New South Wales Police Academy in Goulburn. We can rest assured that our safety and uh, the commitment of a $60 million upgrade to Goulburn Police Academy as we continue to educate and train those who would be uh, able to serve as brave police officers. Mr Speaker, our budget provides a record infrastructure investment of $108 billion over the next four years. That's $108 billion over four years. I had to repeat it because it, they're large figures. I mean, the investment is spent efficiently uh, in the projects across the state that will increase the safety and quality of life of people of our great state, as well as boost the economy and provide a lot of local jobs. The infrastructure investment includes $12 billion allocated over the next four years, that's $12 billion, to the Sydney Metro West whilst $588.1 million will be allocated to New South Wales bus services, including new buses, identifying new bus routes and continuing the transition to low emissions transport fleet. Importantly, $683.5 million will be invested over the next four years in road safety investment. In addition to infrastructure spending, $6 billion has been allocated to stimulus support, whilst another $6 billion has been allocated to support households with the cost of living. True to the values of Coalition's government, $9.4 billion has been added to tax relief since 2011. This government has a record investment of $7.9 billion over 210 new and upgraded schools, as I mentioned, in New South Wales budget as well. $1.1 billion has been budgeted to health in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and $6 billion in stimulus support. Mr Speaker, it's no surprise that Labor will criticise our economic management and investment in infrastructure. In fact, I'm more concerned that they support us knowing their history of economic mismanagement and false promises. We're extremely fortunate that the Labor Party were not in government at the time preceding the pandemic. Otherwise, we would not have had the strong fiscal management that enabled us to keep businesses afloat and invest in the recovery and prosperity of the greatest state in the greatest country. We're also extremely fortunate that they were not in government during the pandemic um, we, we recall that the past Labor governments could not complete the most basic tasks in normal times. Imagine what it would have been in the case of the pandemic. I look forward to seeing businesses continue to open their doors, having survived a pandemic that wrecked, wreaked havoc across the world and brought the world to a standstill. They will do so knowing that we are investing in infrastructure that will create vibrancy and jobs in their respective areas. The businesses will be supported by safe and efficient roads and prosperity that will bring customers to their doors and re record investment in education that will educate and train future employers and employees. 
The lives of individuals, families and business owners are being made easier with a $2.1 billion allocated to digital investment in New South Wales. A record $108.5 billion in infrastructure investment over the next four years, as I said, Mr Speaker. The list goes on. I'm also proud to be part of a government that assists our disadvantaged to give them the very best chances in life. Delivery of our stimulus measures that have included more than 6,000 tutors employed in 2,184 government schools involved in the intensive learning support program for the most disadvantaged students. The stimulus measures have also led to support for more than 8,000 victims of and survivors through the domestic violence family violence support package. A main reason behind our success is that we listen to the community. I recently had the privilege of hosting a Hawkesbury Business Town Hall meeting via Zoom titled Getting Back to Business with the Honourable Victor Dominello and the Minister for Digital and Minister Customer Services and also the Honourable Damien Tudorhope, MLC, the Minister for Finance and Small Businesses. During this, we listened to the real life concerns of the small business owners who are the driving force behind our economic success. We absorb their situations and our strong economic management allows us to invest in ways that address their concerns. We ensure funding is efficiently allocated to the specific needs of our communities with all the subsequent benefits that flow into the economy. Mr Speaker, New South Wales is known to be a great place to live, work and play and visit. This is the result of a New South Wales government that allows businesses to prosper and provides a helping hand and the infrastructure enabling people to innovate and work hard. The support we provide families is for the purpose of their quality of life, safety and well-being. We have allocated $43.9 million over two years to provide a $100 Learn to Swim Active Preschool voucher for children aged three to six years, not yet enrolled in school, to develop important water and safety swimming skills. Our investments have and will continue to protect the health and safety of the citizens, transform communities, support individuals, families and businesses, address cost of living, living pressures and drive productivity. I look forward to future investments in the recovery and future prosperity of Hawkesbury and New South Wales. Thank you, Mr Speaker. <laughs>